This is session 14. We're going to talk about witchcraft defiles. Uh, not a lot of Christians like the book of Leviticus. <clears throat> all the sin offerings, <clears throat> grain offerings, and trespass offerings, and all those offerings. We feel like it's all old. But there are entire chapters there in the book of Leviticus that are very, very powerful beyond what the priests had offered as sacrifices. You get into those middle chapters in 18 and 19, 20 and all those, very, very powerful. If you ever had questions about whether some behavior was sinful, just look at Leviticus. It'll probably answer the question for you because Leviticus lists out all these things that are sinful in one chapter, like in 18, it'll list all the things that are sinful, and then in 20, it'll tell you the penalty for doing this thing. So sin is not just something that happens in a corner. There's a penalty that comes with it. And um, so Leviticus is a very powerful book. So let's go here. <clears throat> let's look at Leviticus chapter 19. I'm going to read a couple of verses. <clears throat> and you're going to see this, this progression of what God says about witchcraft and those who participate in it. Leviticus uh, 19 and verse 26 <clears throat> It says, you shall not eat anything with blood, nor shall you practice divination or soothsaying, witchcraft, any type of witchcraft. And you look at verse 31, give no regard to mediums and familiar spirits, or spiritists, the NIV says, do not seek after them, to be defiled by them. Notice that word, to be corrupted or polluted would be another way to translate it. And here's why. Because I am the Lord your God. That's why he says to, to not do it. So we see here, he's listing out items of witchcraft. And he's saying, don't do it. Why? Because it's going to defile you. It's going to corrupt you. It's going to pollute your spirit if you do that. And then he tells you the reason why you shouldn't do it beyond that. He says, because I'm the Lord. Just do it because I'm telling you it's wrong. <laughs> and I'm Lord and I know it's right. You know, there's a lot of times my kids, when they were growing up, they would come, Dad, why can't we do it? Because I said so. <laughs> you know, that's it. Just that's it. Because I said so, you know. And God is telling us, you know, I know what's right or wrong. The Lord is saying, I'm the truth. I'm the way. I know what's right and wrong. If I tell you don't do it, then don't do it. So... <clears throat> In the book of Isaiah, I love this, this word here in Isaiah 8, verses 19 to 20 that's there in your notes. And when they say to you, seek those who are mediums and wizards, who whisper and mutter, should not a people seek their God? Should they seek the dead on behalf of the living? He goes, go to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, it is because there's no light in them. So that's very simple, right? You don't need to go consult, we said earlier, a medium or a wizard or a psychic or anything else. You don't need to go com consult somebody that's astrologer or somebody dealing with horoscopes. You don't need any of that. Just go to the Word of God if you want a word from God. That's the simple truth of the Word there. Let's go also to Leviticus 20, the next chapter, and let's look at verses 6 and 7. So here's where he enters the penalty phase of what these people are doing bad in these other chapters and he says in Leviticus 20 verse 6 and the person who turns to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them I will notice what God says I will set my face against that person and cut him off from his people wow that is something right there and he says, so consecrate yourself, make yourself holy therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. So again, wh what did we say, read earlier? They defile themselves, and here it says, you're prostituting yourselves. It's as if you now have another lover. The Lord should be your only lover, the one that you love passionately, but now you got something else going on over here. That's a, it's an affair, it's an adulterous thing. You're prostituting yourself as you're doing this. So um, what, a, what a statement. I'm going to set my face personally against that person and he's gonna they're gonna die i'm gonna cut these people off from uh from that so <clears throat> i love this word in uh first corinthians again and you i know that you guys know this but i'm saying this for everyone's sake including those who are watching 
uh, the only one who knows everything about the Bible, the only one who knows everything about God, the only authorized interpreter of this word is the Holy Spirit. He is the teacher of all teachers. You really don't need a teacher. You don't need a pastor to show you the truths of God. And yet God has put those gifts in the church to help strengthen and encourage the body of Christ. But the Holy Spirit is the one who knows alone the things of God. So if you need to know anything about yourself or about things about God, you can go to the Holy Spirit because He's the one who knows. And 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10 and 11 says, For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. And I want to say there are, there are deep things of God. There are things that, that you have to learn over the years and through experience and through wisdom and through an accumulation of knowledge. There are deep things of God. But nevertheless, even so, no one, somebody say no one. No one, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Amen. No one knows them. I don't know about, I would, we, you and I would not know anything about the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit unless the Holy Spirit reveals it to us. And so we run to the Holy Spirit. We go to the Holy Spirit to learn anything we need to know about God. And that's so powerful that the precious Holy Spirit is the one who's been given to us and uh, been blessed with. Let's look at one last verse here in Leviticus chapter 20, the last verse here of this 20th chapter and uh, verse 27. <clears throat> a man or a woman who is a medium or who has familiar spirits, notice this, shall surely be put to death. They sh shall stone them with stones. Their blood shall be upon their own head. That's how severe God was with this whole situation. The, uh, all the sins of sexual morality had the death penalty. This sin of witchcraft has the death penalty on it in Old Testament Israel. In our day, we, we execute people, the government does, through lethal injection. We used to do it by electric chair. Uh, back when Lincoln was assassinated, they, they hung people. Back in those days, they stoned people to death. And that's the way they dealt with it. And when it says their blood shall be upon their own head, in other words, they're responsible. They know God's word clearly reveals not to do that. So if they keep doing it and they get involved in that, then they're responsible for their own blood. They know better. They've been taught. And so now you here too, me as well, we know better. We, we, we know these things are wrong. We know these things are wrong. And so we reject them and we're not going to be engaged in them. So I say once again here, the only one who knows everything about God is the Holy Spirit. Why consult a spiritus when you can consult the Spirit? <laughs> the Spirit of God knows infinitely more than a spiritus could ever know. And God can show you everything, even past trauma, past hurt, past anything you need to know about your past. The Holy Spirit knows and He can show you how to be healed, how to be delivered, how to be set free. So we go to the Holy Spirit. We don't go to these practitioners of the occult. All right, in our next session, we are going to talk about some cursed items, uh, including pornography and violent videos that people bring into their house. Blessing and honor, glory and power.